A very good evening to all of you. Welcome to the training session of Kodeva 2022. I request all of you to please share this joining link with your friends, your fellow classmates, so that they can join us as well. And I hope all of you are doing good. So we will be join. Uh, we will be starting very soon with this session. So please share the joining link with all of your friends. your fellow classmates and ask them to join this meeting good evening pavan good evening vinu Hi Tanvi, it's so nice to see you again. Good evening, Namita. Okay, if you're connecting with us um from out of India, then good morning. <laughs> so hi Sankalp. Okay, so your Binu is Sankalp Jha. Okay, okay, that's cool. All right, so let's start up with the session. I'm all good. I'm all good, Tanvi. I hope you are doing good too. Okay, so starting with today's session, we are going to. look into the introduction to machine learning using python programming so what we are going to do is we are going to introduce you guys to ml and we are going to use python programming to make our activity today all right okay so moving forward uh, i request all of you to first of all join the telegram group because if you are not going to join the telegram group you won't be getting the updates and support from our team so i request all of you to join the telegram group as soon as possible uh either you can scan the qr code there on your screen or you can directly click on the link in the chat box so yeah uh the telegram group is there to support you guys so it's better if you guys join the telegram group as soon as possible moving forward i will be playing a video for you guys so that you guys um understand everything about codeva 2022 and so i request all of you to watch this video thank you for the fourth consecutive year bringing you the biggest international ai and programming competition for kids codeva 2022 international fourth edition to make kids aware and inspire them to brainstorm over emerging issues To make the world a better place, kids need to build solution-based projects on the following theme: save the environment, strengthen the health infrastructure, revolutionize the agriculture, automate the surroundings, make smart transportation system. You can make anything and everything you want, from stories to games, from software-based AI projects to hardware based projects Pictoblocks an international AI education and coding platform you can learn to code make interactive animations and games interesting projects based on AI program actions for robots and much more With Pictoblocks app now available on Play Store you can even make your project for the competition on the go Anyone above seven years old and falling under three age groups can. Yes, you can either participate as a one-person army or in a team of two with your coding buddy. Follow these three easy steps to participate. Register by entering the team details on the contest portal. 
Prepare to enhance your coding and AI skill via self-learning material and AI boot camps. Now that you have the skills required, it's time to show the world what you have got. Submit your project brief, project file and the project video. Now all you have to do is sit back and wait for the results. Registration for Codeva 2022 International starts on 10th of October. The last date to submit your project is 10th January 2023. You can register anytime between 10th of October and 10th of January 2023. The winners of Codeva 2022 International will be announced on 31st January 2023. Participants stand a chance to win more than 60 prizes worth $20,000 in total. Along with the cash prizes up to $1,000, all the winners will also receive a medal, certificate and the official Codever 2022 AI t-shirt. Participate in the biggest online AI and programming competition for kids with more than 3 lakh plus participants, 1,000 plus schools, 1 lakh plus teams from 90 plus countries. So, what are you waiting for? Registration starts today. So, I hope this video gave you a little overview about Codeva 2022 and things are clear to you. Okay. Moving forward, we are coming to all about machine learning. So, right now, I'm just going to give you a quick overview of what is machine learning and I will tell you guys that. Um, tell you guys about applications of machine learning. So machine learning is, I would say, one of the trendiest topic nowadays, only because the data that machine learning can produce and can compute is better than other devices. So machine learning, using machine learning algorithms, you can compute the data, you can process the data, you can use uh, machine learning algorithms. That will be very helpful for you because it will be giving you the desired output in less amount of time. So later in this session, we will be making an activity and we will be teaching the computer to differentiate between dog and cat. So I will show an image of dog or and cat, and then the computer will uh, differentiate between it. All right, so this is what we are going to do. Okay, moving forward, coming to one of the most important thing that is how machine learns, because that is something that all of you guys should know that machine learns just like us humans. Okay, because humans have created machines, right? That is all true. So therefore machine also learn like humans. What we do is we simply give input to the machine. We run that machine uh, input into, uh, you know, with an algorithm and we get the desired output similar way you guys we guys do that right so our teachers teach us in the class that means she is giving us the input we are taking that input manipulating it in our brain and then we are giving the output when we are giving the output in exams right so my exams are going to start soon so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start revising that means manipulating everything inside my brain which my teacher have taught me and then I will be taking that things forward from there. I will be giving my best in the exams. Okay. Same way machine learns. So you give an input. That input can be an image. It can be a sound file. It can be a text file also. Then we have model. So model is like the algorithm that operates on that particular input. Right. That means manipulate it. The same way we manipulate the information that our teachers give us. So that we can write that points in exam. Okay, and then we get the output. Output is like the base of the output on the machine. It is based that how that machine will take the decision and how that machine will act. The same way humans do. We give the output. So suppose if I get a question which was taught in the class, I give you the output accordingly. Like I get a question which says that, you know, what is photosynthesis? So all of us know what is photosynthesis. Right. So we give that uh, uh, we give answer to that particular question and we write all the things from there. Okay. 
then moving forward in the last session we also talked about types of machine learning i'm not going to go in depth of it once again but i'm going to give a little brief about it to all of you so machine learning there are three types of machine learning first is supervised second is unsupervised and third is reinforcement okay let's brief about them once again a little bit that's it not in depth so supervised learning is this uh, that when you are giving a machine data which is labeled that means data which is labeled so i am giving machine images of a phone and a tablet and i'm labeling those images that this is a phone this is a tablet so the machine will understand that okay this is the difference between it it will use the algorithm and try to find the difference what can be the possible difference between a phone and a tablet the size difference is there which is visible via naked eyes then we have other differences right a mobile phone uh, has better camera than tablets that is true mobile phones are um, more uh, handy but that is something that of course machine cannot understand the handy part but it will be able to understand uh, and it will be able to differentiate it, uh, differentiate between it because it is getting the labeled data okay then we have unsupervised learning so unsupervised learning is when we are giving the data to the machine that is that is unlabeled okay unsupervised means unlabeled data that we are giving the machine so suppose if i'm giving the machine some fruits or vegetables like if i'm giving um tomato potato brinjal onions and capsicum bell pepper which you normally say and then the different colors of the bell pepper i'm giving to the machine and it is unlabeled i'm not telling that this is mush this is bell pepper this is onion this is potato this is tomato i'm not telling the machine so that machine will understand the things itself and will classify those fruits and vegetables accordingly so whenever i will show a fruit in front of uh, the machine it will say it is a fruit and it will name that fruit that it is a mango it is a peach it is grapes or if i show a vegetable like broccoli or um, brinjal bell pepper it will tell me if it is a fruit or or if it is a vegetable so that is unsupervised learning then we have reinforcement learning reinforcement learning means suppose uh, let me give you example first of reinforcement learning and then i will be giving you i will be relating it to the computer world so the first example is when you guys are being taught in class you guys sit and give the exam right how do you give exams whatever you do in your exams it depends on uh, you know how many how much marks you are going to score so suppose you are working and uh, you are writing your exam you are done with your exam your teacher is checking the te checking is also done everything is done you get your papers back and the teacher is saying that the uh, you know the exams were of 90 marks but you scored 45 suppose i'm saying then what will happen teacher will say that uh, you have to do hard work because you did not write the appropriate answer your marks was deducted same way machine learns in reinforcement learning how they learn they learn like you know when they are working when they are working a uh, machine suppose they are giving us the desired output that we want the output that we required then that machine is doing great job it will get full marks but suppose if the machine is giving us the output that we don't want the output that we don't want suppose if i'm telling the machine to calculate a very big equation a very big equation and is going to calculate it is going to manipulate it and is going to give me the result and suppose the results are not the desired results that i want they are incorrect then i will be working on the algorithm again that computer i will tell that computer that it is it is not correct please work on it 
so that computer will work on it it will learn itself it will learn itself it will learn the difference between good and bad all right okay moving forward to the applications of machine learning we have object classification in which um, you know uh, ob object can be classified that this is the table this is a chair this is a mobile phone right so that machine learning can ob uh, classify objects then we have shape identifiers shape identifiers as you can see from this particular gif over here machine learning can identify different types of shapes if I'm displaying a circle, it will identify it is a circle. If I'm displaying a triangle, it will identify it's a triangle. Same for square and same for other particular images or um, images or shapes. It will identify that. Then we have surveillance. Like you have uh, one example over here of surveillance application of machine learning. It is saying that please wear mask when the girl is not wearing mask. And it is thanking whenever the girl is wearing mask that is part of surveillance part of surveillance also comes um, you know when you are using a ring doorbell so ring is the company uh, when you have ring doorbells at your home so what they do is they have camera inside them and they are connected to your phones so whenever there is someone near your house uh, you will get a notification that they your and the camera will open open up that is a part of machine learning we will detect who is outside and if somebody is outside or not for how long somebody outside for how long the gate was opened if the gate is locked if someone is trying to open the gate or break in your house it will notify the police that is all part of machine learning that is happening over here then we have healthcare healthcare um, when I was doing a course from Stanford University, USA, in that particular course, uh, I had a very amazing sir that is Andrew NG. His name is Andrew NG. So when he was teaching me, he told me about machine learning playing a major role in healthcare and how that is happening. Right now, you can see on your screen, there's a pneumonia detect detector that is may uh, that is um, on your screen the gif over here andrew sir told me that vivek there are so many types of surveillance um machine application machine learning uh, application of machine learning that there is one application that scientists and you know uh, software developer they have built together what is that that is it will detect whether the cancer is malignant or benign. Detecting the cancer, if it is malignant or benign, is very hard. Even doctors can't do it. But that machine learning algorithm was able to do it. Now, that machine learning algorithm is also being used in AIMS, India's most biggest hospital branch. They are using that to detect whether the person have benign cancer or malignant cancer. So benign cancer is that it can be removed, it can be healed. Malignant is it is way too infected. High risk. Naked eyes cannot understand the difference between them. If I show you the MRI, if I show you the ultrasound, you won't be able to understand the difference between the malignant and benign tumor, the cancer tumor. Then Andrew sir also told me how the how the machine is being learned, how the machine is learning. If we are going to give the supervised machine learning data, then it's going to give us the desired output. It will tell us if that uh, you know the ultrasound is of a benign tumor cancer or a malignant tumor cancer. That is one of the major application of machine learning over here. Then we have games also. All of you play games. There are a lot of games in which you have to tilt your phone to move your car. Right? There are, play, there are games uh, which I have played when I was, remember the name, but it was car driving game where 
I tilt my phone and the car will move that way. So if I'm tilting my phone to the left hand side, the car will tilt to the left hand side. Take a turn. Yeah, need for speed is also one of a good example of machine learning. Why? Because you are using your phone to tilt your car and it is tilting that way. So that is an application of machine learning. So before moving towards the activity, I would like all of you to first of all download the application that is PictoBlocks. So links are there in the chat box, but um, you can also download it like this. I'm showcasing it to you right now. You can go to open any browser and type download PictoBlocks and you can download PictoBlocks software from the first link over here. So if you open this first link, you can choose your device type. You can choose windows mac os linux android ios and you can download the pictoblocks application okay i hope that is clear to all of you all right moving forward towards the activity i'm just opening pictoblocks in my device just a second okay yeah i hope you are able to see my screen till now do you have any other any doubt Okay, someone is Daisy is asking, can you please explain unsupervised? Uh, Daisy, okay, Binod, it is Binod. Binod, unsupervised learning means when you are giving the data to the computer unlabeled. It's like teacher is checking, teachers are making a report card, but they don't have names. So you won't be able to understand which report card is yours or which report card is your friend's. Right. Therefore, un, uh, unsupervised learning, unsupervised learning is important because ma machines can understand the difference, but humans cannot. Unsupervised learning is giving the data in in an, in such a way that the computer can classify the difference between the objects, but cannot label them. I can show strawberry, apple, banana to my computer. I won't name them. Computer might be able to detect the difference, but computer won't be able to name them. Right? So and that is unlabeled data that we give in unsupervised learning. I hope it is clear. So before making the activity, I would like all of you to download the folder that is containing the all the images of dog and cat. So you can download the folder or you can download images directly from Google also. It's up to you guys if you want to download the folder and use the images that I am going to use. Or if you want to download it from Google, you can simply do that too. Okay. Now, coming back here, I will switch to the Python interface. Click on go ahead. And open the machine learning environment. I'm going to open the machine learning environment and I'm going to create a new project though. I have created it twice, but of course, so I'm going to create a new project type cat vs dog um, 7 p.m. session. It is some typing 7 p.m. And click on image classifier and create project. So yeah, now you can see there are two classes over here and then you have to train your model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to name class one as dog and class two, sorry, class two is being named as dog because I copy pasted it somehow and class one as cat. So yeah, you can name it either way also. Now to upload the images, what you have to do, click on upload and choose images from your files. So I'm going to open So I'm going to open the folder. I'm going to open the cat folder. And then I'm going to choose all the images. I'm going to choose all the images. Oh my God. Um, I'm not able to select all of them at the same time. Just a second. Okay, I'm going to select them manually then. So select them and click on open. So then your files will be uploaded. 
then of course 10 images cannot be uploaded so you have to more upload more so i have downloaded some of images i'm going to use those so yeah we have the cat images down here so these are the images that i have to use so you can upload as many images as you want to but 20 is minimum so 20 is minimum but if you upload more than 20 that is better because you will be it will be helpful for you because the uh, the accuracy of your model will be more so i'm going to i'm just uploading the images of dogs over here done i'm going to upload 10 more because right now i've just uploaded 10 they are in different folders therefore i have to upload it twice upload them twice but if you have the images in the same folder you can directly choose all the images at once and you can upload them so yeah all the dog images are done they are uploaded in my model so there are 21 dog images and 20 cat images now i have to train the model so i will click on train model i have to wait for some time till the model is being trained So I hope this point is clear to all of you. If you have any doubt, you can go ahead and ask your doubt. So can you please explain surveillance? Uh, Vijaya Lakshmi, whenever uh, I talk, we talk about surveillance in uh, machine learning. So you have security cameras, which can detect on each. So in Delhi, where I live, uh, the capital of India, Delhi, we have security cameras that can detect the number plate of any vehicle from a very far distance. They are made this way. So that is an application of surveillance. Uh, that is the application of that is a part of surveillance, which is an application of machine learning. So I hope that is clear to you now. Okay. So my training is completed. Now I will export the model. So I have to wait for some time. So you have to click on export model and wait for some time. So how can I name class? It doesn't work with me. So you have a pencil mark over here. If you can see, you have a pencil mark over here. Let me click on edit once again. Look over here, you have a pencil mark, which on which you can click and you can change the name. Okay. I hope that is clear to you. All right. So I'm coming back to my, this windows. So this whole code you don't do not change anything on this whole code you don't have to change anything remember this so where you have to code now so you have to code after line number 60 so you can directly write over here hashtag code here i'm just going to write it and in between these you have to code okay okay so first of all, we have Toby Sprite, but you know, there are the by default Toby Sprite thing is not there. So I will type Sprite equals to Sprite in bracket in double quotes. I will write Toby because I will be using some Toby functions. Therefore, I'm making a Toby Sprite um, variable and in which I'm calling out the Sprite class and the value is Toby. This is by default, but you have to type it over here because it vanishes when you export the model. Coming back down here, so you have to start your code from here. Now, what I want to do is whenever I click on run, I want the camera to turn on it to detect image and tell me if it is a dog and or cat. And I want the Toby to say it also. So how can I make Toby say I will use if function if sorry, if conditional statement with Toby uh, sprite dot say, I will be using sprite dot say, which is a function of Toby. So if predicted class, predicted class means that class is that is being predicted by the camera. So when it will be predicted, when we are going to show an image of cat or dog. So if you have cat or in, like cat or any dog, at your home, you can test the whole application with them all. So you can bring your dog 
dog near the camera you can make him sit make her or him sit near the camera it will the toby will say that it is a cat or a dog all right so if predicted class double equals to in codes you have to type dog in double quotes you have to type dog the reason is this that because it is a string then you have to type semicolon and under it you have to write sprite dot say in which you have to write this is a dog and else in the else part what you have to write you can directly write sprite dot say if it is not a dog then which animal it will be a cat because we have two classes only so we can use the if and else condition only so i will say it is a cat so this is a cat done so we are done with the whole code so now i'll be using my phone to show the image I will be using my phone just a second. Okay. All right. And I'm going to first save this program with the name of cat vs dog and save it. Now the project is being saved. Okay. Now I will click on run. okay so yeah sorry for my messy here guys i'm going to show the image in the camera so now you can see toby sprite is saying this is a dog okay suppose if i'm showing it an image of a cat now you can see it is saying this is a cat and over here also you can see okay you might not be able to see it i'm so sorry i'm not sharing the whole screen yeah this is a cat and whenever i'm showing a dog image it is saying this is a dog so now you can you see the difference between this so this is an image classifier i hope it is clear to all of you so this is how you make your own image classifier okay i hope that is clear to all of you i'm sharing my screen back and going to give you a little recap of the code so how you have to i hope the training part is clear to you so once you done the you are done with the training you have to export the model in python interface of pictoblocks you have to type sprite equals to sprite in bracket in quotes toby after that you have to type your rest of the code after line number 60 so after line number 60 you have to type the code you have to first write if the predicted class that is being predicted from the camera if it is a class of dog then the sprite the toby will say this is a dog else that means we have two class now so we can use else part also else it is a cat so i hope this is clear to all of you the whole activity please test this activity by yourself and if you have any issues regarding this activity you can ask your doubts in the chat box okay and in the doubt session that we will be having tomorrow so you can do that as well so i hope this activity is clear to all of you can you show everything from starting we uh, know everything from starting showing it will be difficult so once i'm done with the uh, live stream you can rewatch the session okay showing everything it will be very difficult <laughs> okay so now i request all of you to fill the attendance some feedback form i hope everything is clear to all of you and yeah so please fill the feedback form there the feedback form link is there in the chat box 
or you can scan the QR code on the screen and fill the form. Any doubt, anyone? It's clear. That's great, Jana. I'm very happy. It's clear to you. I'm very happy. Great. Fantastic. If there are no doubts, then I will be taking uh, off from here. I will be seeing you guys tomorrow. Toby means the name of the character. Yes, Renuka. Toby means the name of the character. Name of the sprite. Correct. You're correct. Fantastic. Okay. Any other doubt? Anyone? All right, so yeah, I see no more doubts, then that's it. For today's session, I will be seeing you guys tomorrow. At the same time for doubt session, the links will be shared in the Telegram group. If you have not joined the Telegram group, I request all of you to join the Telegram group as soon as possible. All right, so yeah, I will see you tomorrow then. Bye-bye.